Thank you so much, uh, Rachel, for uh, this nice introduction and thank you all for coming. And uh, yes, I will start with my lecture. I started with my, um, with my uh, research uh, at, uh, in 2010 and I got really into Scottish portraiture in uh, the, the next years and I still love it a lot. Um, so um, first we see here already uh, one of the uh, Skugel uh, images uh, in the Hunterian. Uh, but uh, I first start with, uh, these are my books. Uh, they are published uh, uh, in December 2021, and it's a wealth of information, if I may say so, about Scottish portraiture in this period, and also a little bit before that, so the start of the portrait tradition, and also after that. Um, so let's start with the start of a portrait tradition, uh, whereas the English uh, had a very long and strong uh, tradition already. Um, it started a little later or really ex exploded a little later in, uh, in Scotland. And mainly in the first time there were uh, foreign artists that came to Scotland, such as Arnold Bronckhorst. Uh, this picture is in the National Gallery in London. Um, but also uh, somebody like uh, Adrian van Son. And Adrian van Son uh, became court painter uh, to um, uh, James the first sixth, um, uh, or is the, the sixth, I would say, <laughs> um, in Scotland uh, and at the end of the 16th century after Arnold Bronckhorst had died. And he, he, he became quite prolific. I mean, you see the one at the right, for example, is a really beautiful, well-executed uh, painting. And uh, he, he did quite a lot. It's a little unclear. There's not so much known of his life, but he died uh, early in the 17th century. And um, there, then it became a little bit difficult, of course, with the, with the combination of the crowns, of the two crowns. And um, so there was, for a while, there was not so much, but of course, one of the most famous uh, artists and, and the first Scottish portraitist at the time is uh, George Jemison. So you see here, we see him as a self-portrait. Uh, pointing out uh, probably what he all could and did, and maybe also seeing himself uh, as an art dealer, maybe a connoisseur. Um, you see various paintings that that are also still recognizable nowadays, or a few of them, uh, but mostly they are portraits, of course. Um, so he became very prolific and uh, very well known over time. Uh, another person who uh, was related to uh, uh, Adrian van Son uh, and also came from the Lowlands uh, was Adam de Cologne. And he was, he was very prolific in the 1620s in Scotland. And he painted several very beautiful, um, often three length uh, uh, quarter portraits of uh, noble, uh, uh, women and men. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's something I would like to point out. When I was doing my research, I struggled with the wife of, and that's also some topic, of course. And I tried, I really tried to avoid that. So to uh, give each woman uh, and present her in her own right. And in the catalog resume of, of D David Skugel, I also uh, tried to, to give as a uh, nice uh, a biography of the female sitter as I had of the male sitter to give more interest and more focus also on these women who are, uh, well, have been sometimes maybe being less visible, but something in between. <laughs> so let's go to uh, David's Google. Uh, so actually just before, but mainly with the restoration, uh, one person really came up uh, very strongly, and that's David Skugel. It has long been uh, very unclear who he was. There was hardly anything known. Uh, he, he was called a shady figure, and it was only through my research that I found out that uh, a writer, uh, we would, would say a solicitor nowadays, 
uh, David Skugel was the same as the painter. And we see here one of the most wonderful paintings by him, and that is of the Marquis, the first Marquis of Argyll. And he was, uh, of course, a, an illustrious person. And I think that it's so clear in this picture. One of the things that I really like about uh, David Skugel in particular is that he was so well able to paint real people with all their force. I mean, it's not much about the, 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 the pose or, or something uh, background or like Van Dyck, uh, you know, but there is something about it. There is something that you feel that you get to know these people just a tiny bit, but by their presence. And this is a wonderful asset example. Uh, you see here, uh, Elizabeth uh, Leslie, she is the cover of my first book, my first volume book. And that is also a beautiful example. When you see the frame and, and the, how it is, um, uh, you, you see the pose and the pearls and, and the dress, that's not uh, very specific, but the face is very particular. Because of course, David Skugel used uh, the same sort of attires for different sitters. As well with, with uh, my other cover, also a very striking face, very strong, very uh, peering gaze. And that is something as said that you do not always see. Look at, for example, a wonderful painter like Lely, uh, but he really adapted a lot of his sitters, certainly the female sitters, to a certain sort of uh, glamorous type. But in a part for me, for, uh, yeah, actually passing and not really catching the individuality of uh, the persons. Although he did some wonderful, for example, of the Duke of uh, Lauderdale. Uh, yeah, I come back a tiny bit about how I found out that the writer was the same as the painter, and that is by comparing handwritings. Handwriting of something when he was talking about uh, a painting and something uh, uh, when he signed a legal document, or in this case, uh, the marriage contract of his son, John Skugel. That is also a real catch because that is uh, something that hadn't been done before. It's amazing actually that it has been uh, survived. It's, it's, uh, I, I still remember when I got them and I, 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 I folded them out at, at the archive and they were all folded together with, with some other interesting document related to the family. And I was thinking, where does this come from? Who has kept this all these centuries? Which is amazing. And thanks to all these people who kept things and did not throw all these things away, we are still able to find out a lot of things that has been hidden for so many centuries. Uh, yeah, also old photographs, yay, the Skugel house, it was still there. Um, it's not there anymore, the, 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 this left or right side, this side of uh, Advocates Close, where they lived, uh, is, has been demolished. But in the 19th century, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ran down, it's, it's, it's not in good shape anymore. While in the 17th century, the advocates close was a place to be. It was very close to the, to the parliament. You can see that, very close. A lot of writers, advocates lived there. Judges, for example, on the right, uh, the house that is, I think it's still their part, uh, was uh, also an important judge who lived there. So it was very prominent and it was a very good place to be. And therefore the Googles were able, uh, oh yeah, there's something about a very important other document, um, uh, uh, a testament of uh, David Google's father, which included all sorts of information about the family, first wife, second wife, third wife, brothers, and so on. This is also very rare because often uh, they are uh, uh, testament dative uh, uh, documents, which is basically more an inventory of uh, goods. Anyway, so, David Skugel, living at Advocates Close, I found out what, that he uh, came into possession of it by his, uh, at the time of his marriage, 
uh, I tried to find a document. So I went through the minute books and by doing that and finding this unindexed information, I found it out that it, became in, it came into possession uh, in uh, 1654. And from that time on, he was located so centrally and was portraying all these judges and advocates that uh, were in session uh, just around the corner. So it was very convenient. You see two more very particular faces. You see the attire is often the same, maybe a color a bit different, uh, but for the rest, uh, it's, yeah, the faces are just marvelous. I do not want to mess with any of those. They do not look like they will be very lenient. Um, on the left, a uh, very important uh, patron of David Google. On the right, uh, another wonderful sitter. Um, uh, these are, I included these two in particular because after I finished my book, uh, I was contacted and uh, that somebody has had, had found, uh, actually is the artist uh, uh, Hugh Buchanan. He alerted me on uh, two wonderful uh, uh, David Google paintings and I was happy to see them last year, but they're not included in my book, but now they're included in this lecture. And they're just wonderful examples in beautiful condition. Um, two other portraits of David Skugel that is actually are my favorites. Have a look at the memoir that the husband wrote about his uh, about Elizabeth, his wife, <laughs> and uh, that is so endearing and so beautiful. Anyway, have a look at my book. Um, more children's portraits, and you see the vulnerability of these children, and I think that's very endearing as well. Uh, let me see if I click. Yeah, and then you see the same children a few year, uh, years later, and you see, and then uh, by uh, painted by John Schugel in his early stages. So still working very much in his father's style, but you see, or I see instantly that this is a different hand. There's a different mind. It's nice, it's good. Uh, but he's trying to copy his father's style and he's not really touching for me the soul of these these sitters and that's interesting but and, and you see it for example here same sitter but uh, on the left by david skugel on the right by john skugel I, I i could match them which is also of course a lot of fun and the same i could do in this case uh, on the left, it's called uh, George Gillespie, but it's representing Henry Skugel. In my book, I said probably because it was a last uh, moment uh, uh, discovery. But if you look very well, you will see that uh, uh, they are, yeah, it's the same person in my view. <laughs> so that's very interesting uh, to find these out and to be able to compare um, things in details and these two persons, uh, um, Henry Skugel and his father, the Bishop uh, uh, Patrick Skugel were very important patrons to uh, promote the family uh, of Skugel. Uh, this is Dave, John Skugel at his heydays. I think uh, these are two of the most beautiful portraits by uh, John Skugel in the, in, the, in the first half of the 1680s when he was at the height of his uh, abilities in my view. A um, bit beautiful, uh, original uh, Lely type frames. I'm really into frames a lot and also included a lot of frames in my, uh, in my book because it's interesting that a lot of these uh, portraits remained in the families they were painted for, were often not really cared for uh, by, by uh, other people. So they stay there and they were uh, kept, they kept their original frames, which is interesting and wonderful. And we actually uh, now just learn to uh, more about frames, of course, they were uh, by works by uh, people like um, uh, Jacob Simon. Uh, this is also uh, John Skugel, sometimes did a double portraits. This is actually very rare. This is a beautiful early example. Um, and then, and I hope you can see that because there is something the matter with, uh, do you see the, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you, you see it's okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, the other one, and I 
I'm afraid I can't go back now. So that, do not try to do that. The, the former one uh, was uh, a painting, uh, two paintings by, uh, no, one painting on the left by um, uh, Schunemann and on the right by uh, Karudis. Because of course, the Schoolgirls were not the only one working in Scotland. There were many more. They were, I think the Schoolgirls were most prolific and also worked for a very, very long time. But there were others uh, like, uh, for example, uh, Schunemann, who worked uh, primarily in the 1660s. And then probably he was succeeded by um, uh, 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 James Carudas. James Carudas was somebody who was nothing known of. Uh, we knew a lot of paintings who were uh, previously just uh, ascribed to uh, Schunemann. But uh, I found out on the basis of uh, comparison, but also archival information, that uh, the, the second related badge of portraits, which is rather a large uh, amount, uh, could be ascribed to James Carudas, which is very exciting for me as an art historian to be able to, um, yeah, to, to, to get a new uh, uh, oeuvre connected to a painter you know nothing about. And this is also, we go now back to the, pre, uh, the, the present two uh, slides. And uh, that is, uh, it said, uh, I've always said it's anonymous and I still have to keep them anonymous. But I came uh, across several of these portraits in, uh, in, in, in a few uh, collections from the, the 1650s. And we know that there were some uh, other painters by name, especially um, Isaac Fisitella. Uh, the Fisitella family came from uh, Italy uh, originally, uh, but they uh, came from London and then went up to Scotland, mainly uh, as uh, working in uh, glass, uh, producing beautiful glass works. His brother did that. Uh, his brother was also connected, uh, uh, or a family were also, was also connected with um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the Cologne, um, the painter we saw coming to Scotland in the time that uh, Jemison was working. I, I, I showed you two beautiful portraits. And uh, this person, this uh, Isaac Visitella, the brother, he was a painter. He worked in Scotland in the 1650s. Uh, and at his death in, in 1657, uh, uh, they, there was an inventory, uh, a, a, a testament dative, uh, in which a lot of paintings are mentioned, Man, uh, paintings of uh, noble uh, persons. So um, I now tend to tentatively think that it might be so as all these portraits that I could find that are presumably by the same hand are from uh, just the 1650s, but just before 1657. So who knows? It might be, it, it's interesting to explore that. And of course, we, we hope uh, to find um, new archival material that can really uh, sh sh have, uh, bring some more light into, into uh, a painter like uh, Fisitella. Here, for example, also, it might be that it is also the same painter when you see how it is, but I'm not really sure. There's another painter, at least it's another portrait from the 1650s of uh, uh, so a member of the noble family, Sir John Carnegie. Uh, oh no, it's, it is Alexander Carnegie. Or, or, oh no, <laughs> it's one of the two. <laughs> so anyway, but up north, for example, uh, other pa painters were uh, working, such as this peculiar pair of, of painters. I, I'm not, not even sure, but I think may well be the same painter. And um, so you see, I mean, certainly outside Edinburgh, 
uh, more local, up north, uh, around Aberdeen sometimes, and maybe also more into near the islands. There were other people working locally because as far as we know, people like uh, the Schoolgirls were quite firmly based. They, they sometimes went out of town, but I don't think they were really traveling around Scotland. And uh, of course, people went to, to, to down to, to Edinburgh, but I think a lot of these people just stayed there and, and had their portrait painted by, by painters like this. Of we unfortunately know nothing except for their paintings. Another one, for example, which I uh, nicknamed the Master of Dunness, there is a whole series. I mean, I think they're fabulous. They're so funny. And uh, she's all dressed up with her finery and beautiful hair. It's quite specific. Also the jewelry, I mean, this wonderful earrings that she has is, is specific. It's, it's peculiar. It's not a standard pattern. And that makes it extra interesting. And there are several portraits by this painter, but I have not found any of his paintings anywhere else. So he must have been working or probably worked very locally. Another one on the, on, on the right side, it looks a little bit like um, the Schunemann painter, but not close enough to say, hey, it's the same. And then it would be somebody maybe uh, trained with him or saw his work, I don't know. But it's interesting to see the diversity of uh, these uh, painters. Or sometimes there were painters uh, working uh, in Scotland coming from the lowlands. Uh, again, um, somebody like uh, uh, Jacob de Wet, he was lured uh, to Scotland and uh, to do uh, work for on Holyrood, uh, the, the Palace of Holyrood House and uh, also worked a lot for the Gla uh, at Glam's for uh, the Earl of Strathmore. And um, he did a whole, uh, for example, a beautiful, no, no, no. He, yeah, it's, 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 it's remarkable uh, a chapel in which he painted all sorts of scene and, and there are paintings everywhere. So you're really, when you're standing in the chapel, you're surrounded by it and it's really, interesting not all of the best quality uh, not so well painted as for example he did with the the the, the portrait of his uh, patron which is rather peculiar which is very strange uh, sort of body armor suit uh, probably it was not pink probably most probably this was a uh, red lacquer uh, uh, red, red lake and uh, Red Lake, and Red Lake is a uh, very vibrant red, but it's a very thin layer. So it's easily, uh, it's easily discolored and it quite easily is, um, uh, well, uh, removed when by overcleaning. So I think it may well have been a vibrant, dark, strong red. On the right, uh, Mary of Scots, uh, one of the portraits that he did for uh, the one of 120. Uh, <laughs> Uh, paintings that he did for uh, the Palace of Holyrood House. So he worked a lot in Scotland. Uh, another unknown painter that I encountered in a Scottish collection that I've never seen anything of this hand before. And it's very, it's funny, the same poses. Um, and it's just fun to show the diversity of uh, people who were working there. And another person uh, who worked particularly in miniature was David Payton. He was long for a longer time. He was abroad in uh, working in Rome. He worked also uh, a lot in England. He was uh, patronized by uh, the Duchess of Lauderdale uh, all, already uh, when she uh, uh, when she did not had not married the the the, 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 uh, the duke, and uh, he produced quite some very interesting and beautiful uh, miniatures, all in, um, in, in pen and, 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 and ink. So uh, in, 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 in uh, graphite plumbago. Um, so uh, only in later years, his work becomes a little bit more um, a schematic. Uh, there were some complaints, but at that time he was already quite old. Uh, one of the persons who uh, 
uh, trained with uh, George Jamison, uh, did his internship in the in the 1630s, is John Michael Wright, who was uh, long believed to be a real Scotsman, but turned out to have been born in uh, England. Um, he uh, had his internship but must have left uh, very early in the 1640s to Rome. Uh, they say maybe lured away uh, by uh, a Catholic priest and lived in Rome for a considerable time of his life. He returned uh, in the 1650s, uh, actually with a sort of in-between job when he was an antiquarian, uh, for uh, Leopold Wilhelm uh, uh, in, but when he went back to Vienna, uh, he came to, uh, uh, John Michael Wright came to London instead of uh, going back to Rome and worked from then on in London most of the time uh, and painting portraits. But he did uh, several uh, sitters, uh, so um, uh, Scottish sitters as well. I am now uh, working on uh, a monograph and a uh, catalog resume of uh, John Michael Wright, but it will take a quite considerable time to, to finish that because there is not so much known about his life. So there is a lot to do. Uh, then you get uh, later ones, uh, uh, John Baptiste Medina, a wonderful portrait, uh, self portrait. Medina came to Scotland on the invitation of several noble ladies, and he stayed there uh, from about uh, 1694 and worked till the end of his life, became very prolific, very popular. And one of his uh, pupils, it's not officially recorded, but he must have worked there, uh, is uh, William Aikman, who became a wonderful portraitist himself, uh, who actually went from Scotland to England, also, by the way, going to, to Italy for a while. That was his real desire. That's interesting to learn a lot about, uh, about uh, these painters as well. Aikman was very determined, even sold uh, land to uh, finance his travel to, uh, to Italy. Uh, John Alexander, another painter who worked uh, in the style of, yeah, a little bit, yeah, uh, using the style of the Schoolgirl. Then on the right, Richard Waite, who in the beginning is very Schoolgirlish, uh, is said to have trained, have trained with uh, John Schoolgirl, and I think I can pinpoint uh, some uh, paintings that have been done by uh, by by Waite in the, the studio of, uh, of uh, John Schoolgirl. And I have also mentioned this in my book. Um, so, and then we go on to Alan Ramsey, Henry Rayburn, fantastic painters that uh, are, uh, they were working late in the 18th, later in the 18th century. Um, but going back to the imitation and emulation, uh, I would like to go into uh, first this painting. It's not really the same, you see. It's, but it uses a pose that he's seen uh, with a, a, in a painting by John Michael Wright, I suppose. It's unclear whether he's seen, seen this, but it may well have been. And then using this pose for his portrait of uh, David Hay of Belton. And uh, the, the, the clothes are completely different, of course, and very elaborate, but the pose is certainly reminiscent. Uh, here, it's even more, um, how do you say that, um, uh, uh, visible. On the left, it's um, a, a, a painting, well, it's, it's, it's by David, uh, by uh, Sir Peter Lilly. And we know that Jean Scott, the, the, the Tweedale family, had their portraits painted by Lilly, and then, ordered several copies of it in Scotland, because that's much cheaper. I mean, I think a copy in Scotland was about uh, ooh, a, a three quarter length. What was it? Uh, uh, it was maybe eight um, uh, Scots. Uh, no, it was, it, 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 it's, uh, it's pounds. No, 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 it's not Scots. It's, it's eight, uh, uh, it's probably, nah, anyway, but a lot cheaper 
then uh, they would have uh, been in, in England. Moreover, of course, they were all based in here in Scotland and had their portraits brought back, back from, uh, from London. And then people like uh, David Skugel uh, painted uh, uh, these uh, uh, copies. And we have also receipts uh, by David, David Skugel to, uh, uh, to um, sustain this. You see on the left, it might be the copy done by David. I'm not really sure. This looks really, uh, some of the clothing is not really up what I would expect uh, from him. But on the right, for example, it's definitely a copy by El Schunemann of the same portrait. So apparently they, oh, they were so pleased with, uh, with this portrait that they ordered many copies to give to their associates and family members. It's like we give our, uh, our photo, you say, oh, here's your photos. And then they gave their portraits away or copies of it. Here you see that David Skugel make a lot of use of this particular template. It was very popular. And of course, I mean, if Lely had painted that at that moment, why would it not be suitable for uh, the women in or and the men uh, in, in Scotland? So he used that a lot. Uh, for example, here also, it's very funny that uh, Susanna Hamilton apparently had her portrait uh, painted in, in London by uh, John Michael Wright. And when she came back, or I suppose, she wanted a three quarter length because it was so it's such a beautiful portrait. And then she asked uh, El Schunemann uh, to, or is my attribution, uh, to, to paint, uh, to paint a three quarter length. So he had to invite, invent a little bit of, uh, of the pose and, uh, and of the clothes, but that's not a problem. So he did that. And that's happened, happened more often. Here too, for example, uh, you see uh, a painting by, again, Sapiti Lily, and then uh, the templates in part was reused by uh, David Skugel, maybe in this time, in this case, a collaboration with his son, John Skugel. Uh, here again, and you see that there must have been a sort of template related on the right uh, for that, that served as an example for, for this painting on the right of uh, Isabel uh, Douglas and her daughter. And that's so interesting. And it's also very clever because it was a way to, 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 to work very economically and, and, and reuse patterns that were in, in vogue. And nobody, and not all of these people, a lot of people did not have access to paintings or could afford it to, uh, to have their portrait painted by one of the great masters from London. Uh, yeah, making uh, copies again. Uh, I think this is a, a copy by David Skugel on the left uh, after a portrait by um, uh, uh, George Jemison. So and I see that as a, a, comparison, a comparison. On the right, it's Jemison. On the left, a copy by David Skugel, probably after a portrait by uh, uh, Jemison. But then we go on to uh, the portraits. And it's again, it's using uh, earlier portraits and, and templates for portraiture. And also in this case, uh, you see that David Sk uh, John Skugel, who, Skugel, who, who was ask, uh, asked uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the 1690s, to portray uh, several eminent uh, uh, persons. Um, he uh, portrayed, for example, uh, Alexander Henderson, but he used the portrait of Anthony van Dyck as an example, or maybe a print, it's not completely sure. It's the same uh, position, you, you know, um, I will go into that a little bit more, but you see that there are positions the same way. Sometimes prints were reversed to uh, uh, mirrored again to um, get the same position as, as well, but often prints are mirrored and then it would be mirrored. Anyway, in this case it's not. 
I believe that this is rather well painted and uh, it's definitely uh, by John Skogel, possibly and studio. I'm a little bit struggling and now I go really into things with the, the rough. I think the rough is a little sort of clumsy in places, but maybe the painter had to struggle a bit to really uh, get to the sort of uh, uh, the, the original to have the same sort of, but it feels a little bit different. There is something else about it. All the um, uh, various uh, um, uh, paintings have an oval, but this oval looks like a school, a school oval, but it's just a tiny bit different and they're all the same. And I will go into that a little more because not all the same, all the paintings are by the same painters. In this case, yes, it's absolutely also coming from the Schoogle or the Schoogle studio. And it must have been based on uh, uh, this particular uh, portrait by Arnold Bronckhorst, possibly um, of George Buchanan. And you see that it's very clear that it must have uh, been this template that ha ha he has have he used for this portrait, maybe also using uh, a print, but um, definitely uh, this served as an example to make this portrait. And of course, I mean, a lot of these people were long deceased, just like uh, uh, Martin Luther. So where I've been really trying to find out, especially now for the preparation of this lecture, to, to, to see where did he get his um, inspiration? What, what were his uh, examples that he, 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 he worked from? And this is not really completely the same, but I chose this because I, I like to stern look uh, of, of uh, because it's rather stern and, and, and the, the, how you see that, say that um, the features have these wrinkles and strong um, uh, uh, shadows. And I believe it really must have been uh, originating in, uh, in um, uh, one of these uh, prints that were, uh, yeah, you could find in, 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 in books or anyway. This is quite well painted and I believe it's, it's by uh, at least the studio, but uh, probably uh, John Skogel definitely had a hand in this. Um, so that's an interesting thing here again. You see the Skoogle uh, way of painting. I'm still doubting, or maybe, I mean, probably um, the, these ovals were maybe later a little bit retouched to um, make them in a sort of uh, complete, um, a sort of, that they looked like a whole, uh, uh, set and not coming from different hands. Uh, so, but some of them were definitely uh, later. And uh, I will show that this probably, yeah, it could be one of these, but this is already later. So it's, it's very difficult to find out, uh, to, to find these really early prints. A lot of, interestingly, I found out that, um, for example, of this person, I could not find an earlier print, as, at, at least not at this time. So, uh, because a lot of prints were sometimes just made after a portrait, this portrait by John Google. <laughs> so that's very interesting. Uh, but then you get other, other portraits and then it becomes a little bit mm, more difficult. Because in this case, and certainly on the left, I'm, yeah, it might be that the originally it came from the uh, studio. It's not in a very good condition, I think, sorry. Uh, on the right, I don't see yeah, the hand of, of John Skogel in this. I believe it's may well, uh, yeah, it's, I don't think there is documentation about Hamilton, but I don't know. 
regarding an assignment on 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 John school for for John Scoble for this particular person. But I I would like to go into that a little bit more. But uh, as I see it now, this is not uh, painted by David Scoble, uh, but John John Scoble or his studio. It's more wooden. Uh, the yeah, it might be that of course it also depends on uh, what you have at hand as a print, but you also often see that it's uh, adapted to uh, a particular style of a painter. Uh, and in this case, for sure, it's definitely, these are definitely not by John Scoogle. There, uh, you see that there is the same sort of oval, uh, again, to, to, to make it into one set, but the, the complete handling is very different it's 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 these are the the ones that are weakest i believe in the series and uh, they're probably uh, copies after copies or just from prints uh, that were readily available at that time of course because uh, they were so popular at that time and uh, there were a lot of prints and and paintings uh, made after the originals by people like uh, uh, Sir Geoffrey Neller, for example, or in this case, uh, uh, Sir Peter Lely. Uh, here you see a portrait by Lely or probably studio. I don't think, again, I had some problems finding, uh, I was looking for an original, you know, because, uh, and then of course, oh yeah, I can't go back now because I'm afraid I will go further. <laughs> So um, uh, the position of the two persons, having the woman on the left and the male on the right, is not the traditional posi uh, position. Mostly, normally, as you see, the man on the on the left and the women on the right. So that makes it even more more plausible that in that case, prints were used. Prints in which they were just mirrored prints, uh, like you, for example, see on the right uh, by Gerard Falk after uh, Sir Peter Lely. Again, and then also with uh, uh, Queen Mary, and you see here a sort of, nah, a little bit comparable pair. She has a crown here, and of course it's not the same, but again, most probably, and uh, prints were used. And finally, sometimes when you find the original painting, you find out that the colors do not really match very well. And that means that, uh, yeah, it makes me even more sure that uh, um, a print was used because uh, then the painter didn't know the exact colors. So he had to guess. So, and then I will just quickly go to some of the marvelous Paint, uh, faces that I really became to love a lot. And that's it. <laughs>